All right, here's our third video, our third part video on the unit circle for trigonometry, Algebra 2. Some of you are taking the Algebra 2 Regents, whatever grade you may be in high school, and some of you are taking trigonometry in college, pre-calculus. So let's get to it. For this video, we should make sure we have our pen ready, right? And I'll use blue. So we should know about the 45, 45, 90 triangle, which will go over. I'll go over that in this video. And of course, there's the 30, 60, 90 triangle. So we'll go over these two, and then we'll put them in the unit circle. And just remember, if you need to go to part two and part one, you can look at the link and go back to there. Remember, the unit circle means that the radius, the radius on the circle, is one. And the coordinates right over here on this x-axis would be zero, I mean one, the x is at one, and the y is at zero. All right, so let's do that. All right, we have a big magenta screen here. Maybe I'll use yellow. Maybe that'll work pretty good, pretty well. So we'll first start with the 45, 45, 90 right triangle. So we'll make a right triangle here. And, you know, right triangle has that 90-degree angle in that little box. And so everything else would be 45 degrees. So we have two angles that are equal. This is an isosceles triangle, right? Isosceles triangle where two sides are congruent. Isosceles has two equal or fancy word congruent sides. And angles, right? Sides and angles. And you know that. So the thing to remember on a 45-45, you have to remember this rule. The hypotenuse will always be square root of 2, based on the square root of 2, and we'll go over that. And then the other sides would be 1. That's the ratio. The ratio is 1, 1, square root of 2. So I'll explain that. So for example, let's say, we'll make one over here. Make another one. Let's say that you had the hypotenuse was 16. And you see those two lines there saying that they're equal. So we know it's a 45, 45, 90. And we want to find x. Or we can say a and b. Whatever. It doesn't matter. So how can we do that? Well, we know that the square root of 2 is greater than, than 1, right? We know that. Square root of 2 is between the square root of 1 and the square root of 4. The square root of 1 is 1. The square root of 4 is 2. So it's in between that. You don't really need to know what it is. It's closer to that, though. So in order to find out what x is, we're going to divide. Divide the ratio. So we're going to say 16 divided by the square root of 2. Or 16 divided by the square root of 2, right? You can see it as a fraction. You can see it as this decimal symbol, whatever way you want to use it. But there's a, a new word you should know. Three words. All right, over here. You have to know how to rationalize the, di the not, duh, say that three times, denominator. So it's rationalizing the, the denominator. And I'll show you that. I, I'm just going to briefly show it to you. I have other videos if you want to look at how to do that again. But for this purpose, let me clear some space out. We'll do it again. All right, clear it out. Keep the yellow. So let's make this again. We'll make the right here. Make a big one. Have a little dot there for some reason. I'll keep it. So we said that this was going to be 16, and we want to know what x is. So we're going to do 16 divided by the square root of 2. And when we say rationalizing the denominator, write it up here. Rationalizing the denominator. You do it when you have these square roots. And basically, very simply, for a simple explanation, take the square root in the denominator and put it over each other. You're going to multiply it on the numerator and the denominator like that, just like that. That's what you do for all of these. 
And if you need, again, another explanation on this, you can look at my other videos on that. So if we multiply this, and by the way, this is rationalizing the denominator. This will be 16 square root of 2, because 16 times the square root of 2 is 16 square root of 2. And the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is the square root of 4, which is a perfect square. So you can simplify this. It'll be 16 square root of 2 over 2, because the square root of 4 is 2. And square root of 2 is irrational. It's an irrational number, like pi. It just keeps going. It, it has no pattern to it, and it doesn't end. So again, you can clear this out. We'll put a line. You can simplify that, and you'll get 8 square root of 2. That's the answer. So x will be 8 square root of 2, and since it's a 45 45, 90, that means this side, the other side, will be 8 square root of 2. Let's do another one. All right, let's change the color so it doesn't get too blurry over here. See how green works. Eh, green works good. So what if I had this? What if I had this triangle? It's upside down. Be careful with these. But you saw that box there, so you know this is a right triangle. You know it's 90 degrees. It's a this is the hypotenuse, right? This is H, right? And let's say that we'll put in that H is, you already, H is 8 square root of 2. So what would be X? What would be both those other sides? Try to figure that out. And if you don't like it like this, you can always, you can always turn it around. Why not? Gives you the same answer. So this is 8 square root of 2, we want to find what x is. And if we know x, we know both sides. Let me change the color. This is red. See how red looks. Maybe not red. Maybe white. So again, you're dividing. 8 square root of 2 divided by the square root of 2. And then what do you do next? Rationalize the denominator, right? So we're going to times square root of 2 on both sides. Well, not both sides, but on top and bottom, numerator and denominator. And what'd you get? Well, you got, remember, you got 8 times square root of 2, square root of 2. So this will be 8 square root of 4, because the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is square root of 4. And you know that's a perfect square. And this will be the square root of 4. So we got to keep going, keep going over here, have that line going. So... We know the square root of 4 is 2, so 8 times 2 will give us 16, right? The square root of 4 right here is 2, and 8 times 2 is 16. And the square root of 4 in the bottom, denominator, gives us 2, so the answer is 8. So x would be 8, and the other side would be 8. All right, so if you need to rewind, rewind, I'll give you one more, and then we'll do a 30, 60, 90 and then we'll put it onto the unit circle. So let's clear this out, and why don't we stick with white? I'll make another one, make another right triangle. There's our box, and it says 45, it says 45, so you know that these two sides will be equal. They'll be congruent. And let's say that you know that it shows that this is 10. Well, if that's 10, we know that's 10. But what is the hypotenuse? How do we get the hypotenuse? So remember the ratio. It's 1, 1, square root of 2. That's, that's what you have to remember. So how do you do that? See if you can do that. Pause the tape. And for this, remember now, since you, when you have the hypotenuse, you divide because it's the bigger number, right? But, and the hypotenuse is always, always the longest side of a right triangle. But when... You don't have the hypotenuse, well, then you multiply. So you're just saying 10 times the square root of 2. So h will be 10 square root of 2. That's it. All right, let's do, let's do the 30, 60, 90 one now. And then we'll put that one on a unit circle. So with the 30, 60, 90, we'll make our right triangle here. And... So here we have 60 degrees. Here we have 30 degrees. And remember, triangles have to be 180. 
You know that. So on this side will be x. The hypotenuse will be 2x, so it's 2 times whatever that side is. And then this length here will be x square root of 3. So that's, we need to remember that. Try to remember that rule. So let's give an example of that. Let's say, well, you put a little arrow over here, and I make another one. Missed it a little bit there. So let's say that this was 4. And if that's 4, you know this side has to be 4 square root of 3. But what would be the hypotenuse? Look at the logic and see if you can answer it, and then I'll go over it. Well, if you look at this now, it says 2x. Whatever x is, you double it, times it by 2. So we know that it should be 8, right? All right, let's put this on a unit circle now. Let's get a circle. Let's get a circle. All right, and now we have our circle here. I'll make our x and y graph. Tempting to make it anyway. You get the point. And remember, this is the x and that's the y. This is a unit circle, so we know that this line, every radius, every radii is 1. So let's say that we're going to put the 30 degrees, let's say that's 30 degrees, on the unit circle, and we want to find the coordinates. So I'll put a little green dot for We want to find that coordinate, and we'll make a right triangle. There's our right triangle. So we want to find these two coordinates over here. We know that the length is 1, because everything is 1. Every radii is 1. So what would the, be these coordinates here? What would be the x and the y over here and the x and the y over there? And remember, we're saying this is 30 degrees. Do you remember in radians what it should be? Or remember, to get degree to radian from the last video, you take the degree and you times it by pi over 180. So if you do 30 degrees times pi over 180, you'll get pi over 6. So pi over 6 radians, or 30 degrees, what would be the, the coordinates? So we're going to do our 30, 60, 90 triangle. Right? There's the 90. We know that's 60. What are the coordinates? What do you think they would be? Now, if we find A, let's put a different color here. Let's use yellow. Let's see if you not use blue. A. A is the length all the way up on the y. If we find the length of a, we'll know what y is. And if we know the length of b, we know what x is. So remember, who remembers the ratio? And I'll, I'll put it over here just to help Should make a straighter line, right? So we have x, 2x, and x square root of 3. So we know that's 1. If that's 1, well, a should be half of 1. So that should be half. a is half. That means the y coordinate is half. Okay, so now we know that the y is half. So we have x half. Rewind the tape if you don't know that. Now, how are we going to get the x? We need the length of b. How are we going to get the length of b? Well, just, just look at what we have here. It has to be half times the square root of 3, which is just 3, square root of 3, over 2. Right? Because 1 times the square root of 3 is just the square root of 3. So there's the coordinates. The coordinates right here, we'll put them over here, are the square root of 3, make that 3 better, over 2. That's the x. And the y is half. That's the coordinates. All right. In the next video now, we're going to look at placing the 45, 45, 90 on the unit circle, and we'll put other degrees on the circle.